there is no doubt when attempting to complete his calendar's collection is very fun. However, it is also a very expensive hobby, <laughs> especially since some particular figures have appreciated in value since the last game in 2016. There have been many price guides of calendars available on YouTube. And I have my deepest respect for them for making collectors' lives easier by understanding which figure has more value than the other, which is perfect for planning ahead for your next purchase. The main issue is, is that they're only really helpful if you live in the United States. I live in the UK, so you'll be surprised to hear that the value of different scanners here range from being marginally to majorly different. For example, in the website Scanners Characters List, Flipwreck costs a whopping $25, which here in the UK is equivalent to £19, while in the UK, you see it actually costs a measly £6 in comparison, which for the US is equivalent to $8. So what about the rarest of Skylanders? How are they different from prices in America? Well, I'm pleased to say that a good amount is slightly cheaper in the UK. Uh, but no matter what country you live in, it'll still cost an arm and a leg. And to those who want Robo, like me, ugh, might as well sell your soul what while you're at it. This? So today, I'm going to be talking about the rarest Skylanders in the UK, according to prices in CEX. Why CEX of all places? Well, that's because calendars are more often than not a regular item in CEX, and depending on the value of a figure, you can even receive cash or a voucher to use exclusively in their stores for simply trading in, making this a good guide to those who wish to sell off their collection. Meanwhile, in eBay, prices tend to be higher, and only on occasion do I find a good deal. And charity shops like Farmer often tend to price calendars cheaply, which is great! but it's sadly not too common of an occurrence. So, if you live in the UK or plan to travel there, and you just so happen to be a Skylanders fanatic, then this video is for you. Just a word of warning, but this list is very subject to change. A figure from this list may have a value increased or decreased, so some prices may be inaccurate in a few months' time but the list should give you a basic idea of the order of which Skylander appears where. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Both coming in at number 10, we have Eon's Elite Stealth Valve and Scratch, both costing £38 each, and if you trade them for cash in CEX, you can either get a £25 voucher or £17 in cash. Eon's Elite Stealth Valve may be a bit of an unorthodox choice to start the list, however, it's generally known that the 2014 Eon's Elites are a bit more rare than the 2015 Eon's Elites. While I'm lucky to have a few of them, whenever I look at Eon's Elite prices on eBay, Eon's Elite Stealth Elf is the one that I see the least of a bunch. As a result, I'm not very surprised that Eon's Elite Stealth Elf is on this list. Word of advice though, don't buy Eon's Elites in CEX, as you may end up getting the Series 1 figure by accident. When it comes to Eon's Elites, personally I feel that eBay is the best place to go, provided if a listing for Eon's Elite Stealth Elf even appears, and it's a relatively good deal. Scratch, on the other hand, is the rarest Swap Force figure in this countdown. Scratch was unfortunately released in Swap Force's final wave, and because people were most likely saving up the money for Trap Team, the amount of figures released of her were a bit limited. However, she did both have a single pack and a triple pack featuring Fino and Fawn Horn Camo released in the market. It still didn't save her from becoming pricey in the aftermarket, but at least she fares a bit better in your wallet than some of the later Skylanders in this list. At mighty number 9, we have Dark Hammer Slam Bowser, who was our first Superchargers figure to be in this list, as well as our first variant to be on this list, and he cost £40. If one were to trade him at CEX, then either you receive a £26 voucher, 
or 18 pounds cash. Nintendo console exclusivity aside, the original Hammer Sam Bowser isn't all that expensive, and if you're lucky to find him in a local CEX store, then he only costs 6 pounds, which isn't too bad. So seeing his dark variant is a bit odd on this list, and his prices on eBay is somehow even more expensive. Fortunately, I have good news, but also some bad news. The good news is, is that the Dark Wii Superchargers Racing Starter Pack is the same price as Dark Hammer Slam Bowser, which is A, good value for money as it gets two Dark Variant Vehicles and two Dark Variant Scanders, including Hammer Slam Bowser, and even better, you get a game which is considered underrated in the Scanders community. The bad news is, is that as of making this video, is currently unavailable from all CX stores in England, but it'll still be worth to keep an eye out just in case the Star Pack eventually becomes available in a CEX store. Cause let me tell you, buying Dark Hammer Slam Bowser and the Dark Clown Cruises separately, not the best idea. Number 8 features another tie, with Echo and Double Dare Trigger Happy, both costing £42 each. If you trade one of those figures at CEX, you could either get a £26 voucher or £18 cash. Out of every single Skylander on this list, Echo is the only figure that I own. It's honestly really a testament to how hard to acquire these figures are. Though, three years back when I first started this YouTube channel, I ordered Echo online from CX's website for only £8, so she really has spiked in value since then. Just like Scratch, Echo is expensive mainly because she appeared in the final wave of Trap Team. But with the game only allowing Trap Masters to access elemental gates, Cores were not as sought after at the time, making her the most expensive trap team core that isn't part of a dark or light element. Double Dare Trigger Happy, more so specifically his regular variant, was also a similar victim to being released in one of the final waves of their respective games. In his case, Superchargers. Double Dare Trigger Happy was exclusive to the infamous Land Action Racing Pack, which saw some limited releases because it was part of Wave 4 of Superchargers. Had I included magic items on this list, then the Land Racing Trophy, which was bundled in with the rest of the Land Action Racing Pack, would have come 10th place along with Eon's Elite Stealth Health and Scratch. Speaking of the light and dark element, we have Spotlight. At CEX, she costs £50, and if you trade her, you can either get a £33 voucher or £23 cash. Spotlight, oh poor Spotlight. Like Echo, she was released in one of the final waves of Skander's Trap Team, but Spotlight had the unfortunate burden of being one of two new light element Skylanders, and a core no less, not being able to access the elemental gates and trap team. So obviously down the line, Spotlight has become pretty expensive. While Trap Masters, Nightmare, Night Light are not cheap either, there were at least adventure packs and singular packs released for them, and they both show up at CEX stores on some occasion. But Spotlight was only ever released in single packs, and because sales-wise the Trap Masters were probably a lot more popular, Spotlight and a Comrade Blackout were left in the dust. Oh, and the latter, you'll see a bit later in this countdown. Costing £55, we have the regular version of Thrillipede. At CEX, you could either trade them in for a £36 voucher or £25 cash. Unlike the US, Philippide was actually released regularly in the UK, so the only reason I could hypothesize why he's become so expensive is probably because he was released in the final wave of Superchargers, which only included him and the Buzzwing. While regular Philippide has exploded in value, his signature vehicle has not. Both the Buzzwing and Philippide's Excited variant, which was released earlier in Easter of 2015, both cost £10 each. But if you think £55 for a single Skylander is a bit ludicrous, well, we're only halfway there and things are just gonna get more expensive and expensive. Kicking off the top 5, we have Blackout who costs £60. If you trade him at CEX, you could either get a £40 voucher 
or 28 pounds cash. Okay, I'm not gonna deliberate any further, but the tragic tale of Blackout is pretty darn similar to his friend Spotlight. Released from the final waves, only ever released in a single pack. His sales were far eclipsed by Night's Light and Nightmare. However, to most fans, Blackout is deemed to have a cooler design than Spotlight, and therefore was a little bit more popular than her. And in all of Skander's tier list, Blackout tends to be placed above Nightmare. So having that cooler design and moveset made Blackout a tad bit more valuable. Jumping up significantly in value, we have Royal Double Trouble. He costs £90 at CEX, and if you trade him, you could get a £60 voucher, or for you two pounds cash. There has been a significant lack of Spyro's Adventure and Giants figures in this countdown, and rightfully so, because Skylanders have just taken off in popularity at that stage, there'll be a lot more demand from suppliers and retail stores, and a lot of figures from that era of Skylanders are pretty cheap. However, Royal Double Trouble is the notable exception to that rule. Royal Double Trouble was exclusive to the Skylanders Battleground Starter Pack, and that variant appeared exclusively in GameStop stores, which doesn't exist in the UK. Yeah, you could see where this is going. Because of that unholy combination, Royal Double Trouble is the most expensive variant Skylander on this countdown. Breeze, aka Natalie Breeze, also known as the Whirlwind, is a pretty cool character. Despite suffering from the Smurfette principle, what I love about her is that she's still able to hold her own in combat like the rest of her teammates, like taking down Drill Dozer and saving Surge from a Tratix Reptoid. And speaking of, I really love a friendship she has with Surge. Wait a minute. I feel I'm talking about something different. This is a Skylanders video, right? Where was I talking? Oh. Oh, I meant to be talking about Breeze, the, the mini version of Whirlwind. Oh, uh, how much does she cost again? Let me check. 150 pounds? What? So Breeze, aka my sleep paralysis Steven, costs 150 pounds. If you trade her in at CEX, you'd either get a 105 pound voucher or 87 pounds cash. Okay, so riddle me this. Why is a miniature and cuter version of a fairly common Skylander on this countdown and extremely high on its low less? Well, there are quite a couple of reasons. First of all, she was released in the final wave of Trap Team. That seems like a bit of a reoccurring issue here. Next, just like Echo, Spotlight, and Black Hat before her, she was poorly distributed because more of a focus were given to the Trap Masters. And the icing on the cake, she was only ever released in the Air Mini 2 pack. Her fellow Air Mini friend Petback manages to escape this list. That's because Petback was released a handful of times before she was. Not only in a buddy pack with Series 3 Jetback, but also a singular pack with his Power Punch variant, making Breeze not only the only mini to appear on this list, but also the most expensive Trap Team Skylander on this countdown. You guys were probably expecting them to appear from a mile away. We have Wildstorm and Robo, costing £190 each. If you somehow have a Wildstorm or Robo just sitting on your desk somewhere, then make sure to trade them in at CEX, because you can either get a £133 voucher or £110 cash. Oh, Imaginators, where do I begin with you? This game sold pretty poorly, and the Skylander Senseis were not only quite expensive back then, but have since been appreciated a lot in value. Fast forward to 2017, and Activision had pretty much lost hope in Skylanders figures ever selling. So while Storm and Robo were only made available in adventure packs, had limited quantities released being final wave releases, and were pretty much only made exclusive to Toys R Us, which shut its stores for next year. All of these were real recipes for disaster, and now both Robo and Wildstorm has increased their value exponentially. As I was alluding to earlier in the introduction, Robo definitely got the shorter end of the stick. Being the final Skylander figure to ever release, and therefore was produced in even less quantities than Wildstorm. But good news for those who want to get the latter, 
there's an extra listing available where he only costs £120, which still is quite expensive, but a lot less so than a regular listing. And even better, this cheaper option is actually available in a couple of CEX stores. So it's definitely safe to assume that Robo is definitely more rarer than Wildstorm. But you probably weren't expecting Robo to be at number two. Usually in rare scanners lists, he's always placed at number one. But that's when the last of the big three come in. The most expensive and rarest scandal in England is Green Chompy Mage. The three most accursed words put together in history, costing an unbelievable £300. If you have this guy, then you've officially struck gold. Because if you trade him in at CEX, you could get a £210 voucher or £174 cash. So, pray tell, why the hell is the regular version of Chompy Mage the most rare scander on this countdown? Well, it's because of a very stupid reason. And I don't mean silly, funny, stupid, I mean frustrating stupid. Green Chompy Mage was made an Amazon exclusive. Sure, a bit unorthodox, but shouldn't be too bad, right? Oh, but that's not it. He was only made available through a villain 5-pack. Alright, that's a bit annoying, but surely he'll soon become available like the others, right? Wrong. Only a small amount of green chompy mages appeared in general retail. So because of a scarce availability of green chompy mage, yeah, that's why he costs £300. Honestly, it's a good thing that he received that Jingle Bell variant. Uh, no, scratch that, that he even received a variant at all. That at least provides with a much cheaper way to get this guy under. It's honestly a huge advantage over Bobo and Wildstorm, both of which never received any variants. But if you want to collect every single Skylander ever made, or you just prefer the original colour scheme of Chompy Mage, well, best of luck to you. Unfortunately, we have reached the end of this video. However, do let me know what your favourite rare scander is in the comments below. I'm open to any opinions. Like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.